All right. Well, okay. We're, we're going to start, young people, we're going to start a lesson series on the life of Jesus, okay? Life of Jesus Christ. Nice. And so this is going to be like an introductory uh, lesson, and it's we're going to build upon it. So you're not going to be able to remember everything today, but we're going to start a foundation, okay? Okay. Um, do you have your Bibles with you? That's great. Okay. So let me just start with this. The life of Jesus Christ, how do we know about Jesus? We know about him from the Bible, of course, but there's a per certain part of the Bible that we learn of the life of Jesus, and that's through the Gospels, the four Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so that's important. We're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a harmony of the Gospels. We're gonna look at all the Gospels, and I'm gonna kind of reduce it to you and tell you what the Gospel says about Jesus. Okay, that's really important. So turn your Bibles, please, and we're not going to start reading yet, but I want you to turn your Bibles to John, uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 1, verse 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. So that's the New Testament, the New Testament starts with Matthew, and after that is the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, when you found that, just kind of look up, and we're not going to read it just now, but we're going to... Read it just in a minute. Okay. Okay. We found it just look up. Okay. Okay, look up, please. We're not going to read just now. First of all, we need to know um, what the name Jesus Christ means, right? Some people's name means something. Who, who, whose name here means have a special meaning? Does any of your names have a special meaning that you're aware of? Okay. Well, Jesus Christ has a special meaning. Teresa, you want to tell us what your name is? Harvest. Harvest. Okay. Mm. That's good. I don't mind him. Okay. You give him one. <laughs> no, but what is okay. Timothy means honoring God. Honoring God. Okay, and Jesus Christ also has meaning to his name. Okay, so Jesus is his name, and Christ is his title. And Jesus means God saves. Okay? All right, so Jesus Christ is his kind of full name, includes his title. Jesus means God saves. And during Christmas time, sometimes you hear that. You know, and uh, you shall call his name Jesus. The angel told uh, Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he, Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. So Jesus means God saves. Christ means that he's king, uh, that he's Lord, or in, in the Jewish term, it means that he's the Messiah. Okay, remember that. Jesus Christ means God saves Jesus. Christ means that he's king, he's Lord. And in Jewish terms, it means he's the Messiah, okay? And then we need to know what gospel means. Who knows what gospel means? Okay, I'll just tell you. Gospel means the good news. And the good news of what? This is important. Try, try to pay attention. It's the good news that Jesus died for us, that he was buried, but that he rose again the third day, okay? So we're going to learn about Jesus in the gospels and his life. When you go all through the gospels, and we're going to find out what he did when he came to be born a man, born a human being, what he lived, what he did, and what that means for us. Okay? So, somebody read for us Mark 1 1. Who wants to do that? Mark 1 1. Okay. The answer. Go ahead. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay. Go look, look up, please. All right, so we looked at all those terms except for the Son of God, right? Okay, right? We, we looked at the name, we looked at the gospel, and we need to know what Son of God means, right? So to know what Son of God means, turn to John chapter 1, verse 1. So the next book is Luke, and the last book uh, of the gospel is John. So we, we went through Matthew, we kind of passed through Matthew, read the first verse of Mark, passed through Luke, and then went to John. 
John 1 1. Okay, we're turning to John one one. If you have, if you don't have a Bible, share with the person next to you. Okay. Okay. Now look up first again before we read it. Now we passed through four gospels, right? Matthew, we passed through. Uh, Mark one one, we read Mark. Luke, we passed through. And now we're on John, right? So the first question is, since the Gospels tell us about the life of Jesus Christ, why are there four Gospels? Okay? So let me tell you why. Because God wants everyone to be saved. And so each Gospel kind of focuses in on one kind of people. Okay? So Matthew talks about Jesus as king. We talked about that's his title, king, right? And it's directed especially to the Jewish people. There were Jewish people in the time of Jesus, right? Jesus himself was a Jew, okay? The book of Mark was, uh, tells, uh, presents Jesus as a servant, and it is written for the Romans, okay? The book of Luke, Gospel of Luke, presents Jesus as a human being, as a man, and it was written to the Greeks, and then the book of John, which we're about to read, presents Jesus as God, and it presents him to everyone. Okay? Now, Jesus was born a Jew. That was his ethnic group. He's a human being who was a Jew, just like your ethnic group, or maybe more than one ethnic group, right? Okay, so Jesus was a Jew, but he was born in the setting, in the culture of the Greco-Roman world. Okay? That means he was born amongst Greeks, and he was born among Romans. Okay, so Jesus died for everyone, and even though he was a Jew, he didn't die for just the Jews. He didn't save just the Jews. His purpose was not just to save the Jews. It was to save Jews, Romans, and Greeks, to save everyone. And that's why God designed to have four Gospels, so that everyone can uh, understand Jesus and it could speak to them. Okay, that's really important. That's why there's, there's four Gospels, okay? Now let's read uh, John 1-1 one, one through verse 5. Who wants to read that? Okay, let me, let me read it. You just follow, okay? John 1-1. One, one. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. Look up, please. Remember when Leah read Mark? It said, in the beginning of the gospel of God. In, in the beginning of the gospel, the Son of God. Remember that? In the beginning of the gospel, the Son of God. In the beginning. John also starts with, in the beginning. But these two beginnings are different. When Mark wrote his gospel, it says, in the beginning of the gospel of the Son of God. He starts from the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. John, when he says in the beginning, he doesn't talk about the beginning of his earthly ministry. He talks about the beginning before the beginning. He talks about the beginning before God created the heavens and the earth. Because there was a time when there was nothing. There was a time when God created the heavens and the earth. So this talks about the time before that time. When God created the heavens and the earth, that's when time began. That's when a calendar kind of was begun, and that's why we keep time. Before that, it was eternity. Eternity passed, forever and ever in the past. So John is talking about a different kind of beginning. Okay? So look at your Bible then, and look at John 1.1. I'll read it again. In the beginning. So this beginning is eternity past. In the beginning was the Word. Okay? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now drop down to verse 14. This tells us who the Word is. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, 
glory as of the only Son from the Father. There's that word Son, right? Gives us a hint from the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, look up, please. Who is this talking about? Who became flesh? Right. He dwelt among us, right? He was born, and he, he lived with the 12 disciples, right? And the Bible says he's full of grace and truth. Okay, so let's read verse 1 1 again with the understanding that the word is Jesus. Okay? Right? So let's look back at John 1 1. In the beginning, that's before the creation of the world, the heavens and earth. Okay? Was the word. Why does it say was, not is the word? Because was is past tense, right? So Jesus was in the beginning, eternity past. But he also is the word now. And he will be the word. So he's from eternity to eternity. That's why they use the word was. So don't get confused, okay? In the beginning was the word. So Jesus was from, the, from eternity past, before any beginning. He was there, okay? And it says, the word, look, look down at one, one, and the word was with God. That means God the Father. When you speak of, it says God, it means God the Father. That means Jesus the word was with God the Father from eternity past. That means, that means Jesus was always there. He was never created, he was always there, okay? And then, look down the last part of one, one, and the word was God. Again, why doesn't it say the word is God? Because it's talking about eternity past, right? So, Jesus the Word, in eternity past, was God, is God, and will always be God. That's why the word, don't get confused with was, okay? That's important. So, what have we learned so far? We learned so far that Jesus is called the Word, and he was the one who became flesh, who dwelt among us, right? And that's what we read in the Gospels. That's what we're going to find out in the Gospels, what Jesus did when he lived here on earth, okay? He was from eternity past, right? He was with God from eternity past. And he is God. He was God, is God. Okay? So that explains when it says in Mark 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning of the gospel of the Son of God, in the beginning, describing the ministry of Jesus, okay, who is God, the second person of the Trinity. So this talks that, that God is in three persons. We talked about God the Father, God the Son, okay? And throughout the Gospels, it talks about God the Holy Spirit as well. Okay, I'm giving you kind of an overview. Maybe you don't understand everything. It's okay. But all these things will be repeated. So you don't have to worry, okay? But, and then we'll have some time for questions. I'll make sure there's time for questions, okay? All right. So look, let's look at verse 2 now. Look down at verse 2. Of uh, what? Of John 1. We're still in John 1. John 1. But now let's go to verse 2, okay? A he, that's talking about Jesus, the Word, was in the beginning with God. We already learned that, right? He was in the beginning with God, right? In the beginning was the Word, saying the same thing. Verse 3, all things were made through him. That's talking about Jesus still. And without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, look up, please. That means Jesus, the Word, is the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's important. So we found out that Jesus is from eternity past. He was with God from eternity past. He is God, and he is the one, Jesus, the Word of God, was the one who made everything, who made the heavens and the earth. Okay? So Jesus is creator. Right? Okay, look at verse 3. In him, that's Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay, look up, please. All life... All life that there is, is from Jesus. Yeah. That's what's like your life. That even talked about plant life. Everything that has life, that talks about the one cell that's living. All life comes from Jesus. And if that life is in a human being, that, that life, and there's two kinds of life. There's our physical life. Okay, and that's, there's our eternal life. If you have eternal life, it's from Jesus. But all life comes from Jesus because he's the creator. He created all life. He created the heavens and earth. Okay? So that's important. Just keep in mind that Jesus is all the source of all life. And he's the source of you. He created you. Okay? All right. Look at verse 5. The light, we'll find out that the light 
refers to Jesus. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay, look up here. If you light a candle in a room, can you see the candle, the lit candle? Can you, can you see it? Your eyes are kind of drawn. If you're in a dark room and you light a candle, everyone can see the light. Is that right? The darkness doesn't swallow it up, right? That light, even though it's so small, is able to, to shine and it's not swallowed up by the power of the darkness. So that's a picture of Jesus. Jesus came into the world, and we're going to find out that he's the true light. And in the Gospel of John, these uh, words of light and darkness have a lot of meaning. Light is a picture of life, and darkness is a picture of death. So when Jesus comes into the world, he brings life into the world, a life of death and darkness. And he came into the world so that people can look at him and be saved and have life. Because he's life and light, if we truly look at Jesus and wanting to have the life of Jesus, then we will have it. And the darkness represents sin, the darkness of sin. And the Bible says the whole world lies in darkness. That includes all of us. When God created us, we had life. But because the first man, Adam, sinned, we all became sin and death and darkness. And that's why Jesus came into the world. When, he, when we were created, when he first created us, we had life with God. But because Adam sinned, we all sinned in him, and we are dark. And that's why Jesus came into the world, so that we can have life again. Okay? What did you think about that? Now drop down to verse 9. The true light, that's Jesus. I told you, Jesus the light. He's the true light, which gives light to everyone who is coming into the world. Okay, look up, please. This means that everyone who is born in this world receives the light of Jesus. I've been preaching through a book called Romans, and the, the, the book of Romans says that every one of us, by nature, knows that there's a God. Everyone knows that there's a God who is above all. We know that. And as we get older, though, because we get so fascinated with the world and with sin, then we, we kind of lose that. We kind of lose our belief in God. And we start getting fascinated by other things. We start, start getting interested in other things other than God. Okay? But everyone has the light of God from Jesus Christ that shines in us. Maybe when you were smaller, when you were younger, you believed in God, and now it's kind of hard to think about. That, that's what the, the Bible is saying. Verse 10. So he, that's Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made through him. We, we found that, right? Yet the world did not know him. Look up, please. So the question is, do you know Jesus? You see, when Jesus came to the world, we read it in the Gospels, most everybody rejected him. Most everyone did not want him. And the same is true today. You hear about Jesus, but do you want Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? It's not talking about knowing about Jesus. It's talking about knowing him in a personal relationship. You can know about many people through social media, things like that. Maybe some of these people you would like to know. But you can't go around telling people, I know this person, that person, who's very famous. That would, that would be a lie, right? You don't really know them. You know about them. The same thing is with Jesus. A lot of people know about Jesus, but they don't know him. And if you don't know people, uh, know Jesus personally, then you're not saved. You're, you're not his, his, his child. You're not a son of God. Okay. okay. All right, verse 11. So Jesus, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right, the authority to become the child of God. Okay, look up, please. Jesus came to his own people. He was a Jew, I said, right? He's a human being. He was of some kind of race. He was a Jew. He came to his own people, the Jews, but his own people did not receive him. So we found that the world doesn't receive Jesus. His own people didn't receive Jesus. But the Bible says, but as many as did receive Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave, Jesus gave that person the right the authority to become a son of God. So this tells us how to become a son of God. And we do it by receiving Jesus 
And what does receiving Jesus mean? It means to believe on his name. We talked about his name before, right? His name means God saves. His name means Christ is king, he's Lord. So, so to believe on his name means that you trust him to save you. And you trust him as Lord, so you want to follow him. That's what it means to receive him. It means to believe on his name. It means to believe on all who he is. He is the one who saves. He's Savior. And he's the one who we have to follow as King and Lord. Okay? All right. And verse 13. Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of God, but of God. Okay, look at this. So this tells us what it means to be born of God, what it means to be a child of God. The Bible says it's to receive Jesus, to believe on who he is, that he saves us, that, that he's our king and Lord, that we follow him. But then it tells us what being a child of God is not. That's important, because people misunderstand that. It means that we are not born a child of God through our family, through blood. You cannot become a Christian, and you're not a Christian, because your family, your parents are Christian. That's important. I talk to people on the streets, on Central Avenue. I ask some people, do you know Jesus? And they tell me, oh yeah, I know Jesus. Because my grandmother told me about him. My mother told me about him. You know what I'm saying? So they think that you're a child of God because their parents are a child of God. But that's not how you become a Christian, a child of God. It's not by your family. That's important. Your, your parents, many of your parents are praying for you. Other people are praying for you to become a child of God. But they, they cannot do it for you. You cannot be born in the family of God. Okay, so that's one. You can't be a child of God by being born. Okay? And you can't be born, what we read, is by the will of the flesh. In other words, it's nothing that you do. Coming to Sunday school, coming to church, does not make you a, a son of God or a daughter of God. It doesn't make you a Christian. It's nothing that you do makes you a Christian. Remember, it's by receiving Jesus, by believing that he can save us, by believing that he is Lord and King and we have to follow him. It's not by our family. It's not by anything we do on the outside. It's not because I said I want Jesus. It's not by, because I said a prayer about Jesus uh, to receive Jesus. It's not about coming to Sunday school. Or being a good person, nothing we do. Okay? So that's that's the second thing that we can't become a child of God. And then the last one is by the will of man. That means we can't in our mind just believe Jesus about Jesus. We have to know Jesus. We have to receive him and say we have to follow him. Okay. So that's my message this morning. And let me just kind of repeat real quickly. Okay. So we found that out that we're going to talk about the lessons we're going to follow. We're going to talk about the life of Jesus through the Gospels, right? We found that his name, Jesus, means God saves. We found that, that Christ means that he's king and Lord. We found that there's four Gospels because God wants everyone to be saved. So he's trying to reach everyone. Okay? We found out that Jesus came as a light into the world, a world of darkness and sin. And we are part of that world. And we have sin. We have darkness. And we have to see that we don't have life in Jesus. We have to look at Jesus. He's the light. We have to see we have no light in ourselves. We have no goodness. We only have sin. But if we look at Jesus and we receive him as, as our Savior, who died on the cross, and we learn to follow him, it's nothing that we do but what God does through our receiving Jesus. And that's how we become a Christian. Okay. So, are there, are there any questions about anything I said?